I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person who's been wondering if carbon blade running shoes could actually make me a bit faster. So I've gone and looked at the research. Is there any evidence that these shoes actually work? Also, what's the injury risk? Because I've had some of my friends report interesting things from using these shoes. And then lastly, is there a brand that's better than the others? Now, at the end of this video, I'll also share my two cents on if I did use them, how would I use them to or make that transition safely that I avoid injuries. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareika. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment of any type of injury, all done via video call. Have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to our website. So interestingly, there's actually two elements of a carbon plate shoe that might improve your performance. Now, the first is the obvious one, the carbon plate in the running shoe. And it's mainly thought to work because it makes the shoe stiffer, so it's better at returning energy for each step you get more spring out of your action. Now, the second is actually the type of foam they use. They use a really lightweight foam, but which is also very good at returning energy. So again, more springiness. And some researchers think that that actually contributes more to the gain in performance than the carbon plate itself. That's how the shoes are meant to work. And there's a lot of hype about, yes, it works, but is there actually evidence to back this up? So I'm gonna separate the research into research done on elites and research done on regular people like me and you. Because often in research, you see very different results depending on the fitness level of the person. For the first study, they looked at all the big marathon races in the 2010s. So we're talking Chicago, Boston, London, etc. And the reason they looked at 2010s was because the carbon plate running shoes came on the market around 2016 was used first by elites and then 2017, the general public. So the first thing they looked at was for elite runners who finished in carbon plate shoes versus the ones who don't, how fast on average were they compared to the others? And they found that for males, were well, on average about 2% faster. And for females, it was around 2.6%, which was around four minutes, 18 seconds on average that they were faster. But then they also looked at marathons where the same runner wore regular running shoes versus carbon plated shoes. And how did that compare? And they found for males, it was about, they had a 0.8% improvement in time when they wore the carbon plate shoes. And for females, it was about a 1.6% improvement. Now, the problem with this type of study is there are so many factors that could influence time, like um, how well you trained, um, injuries, all of those type of things. So we can't really say for sure by just looking at one study like this. For the next study, they looked only at elite men, but they also included 10K times and 21K times. And what they found was that, yeah, average improvement was kind of similar compared to the previous study. However, averages can be deceiving because 25% of the male athletes actually didn't have any improvements in their time. So it worked for some perhaps, but not for everybody. And then there's a study where they looked at elite females, also 10K, 21K and marathon time. And they found that yes, in the marathon, they could shave off nearly 1% of their time. In the half marathon, about 0.7. But interestingly enough, there was no advantage in the 10K time for the females. So if we look at the research on elite athletes, there is some indication that perhaps carbon plate running shoes can improve your performance if you're an elite athlete, but it doesn't necessarily work for everybody. And I think the reason for that is that there are so many other elements that actually contribute to improved performance. It's not just the running shoes. What about research on regular people like you and I? Is there any evidence for that? Now, there are studies where they've taken people and got them to run on treadmills in a lab and tested what happens a regular running shoe versus a carbon plate running shoe. But they still got people to run at really, really high speeds. So we're talking um, 14 kilometers per hour, 17 kilometers per hour, and 20 kilometers per hour. Putting this in perspective, a 14 kilometer per hour pace gets you a 5K time of around just over 20 minutes. So these are perhaps recreational runners, but they're still top level recreational runners. So they're not quite the general public. And what was interesting in these studies was that actually they found at the slower speed of 14 kilometers per hour, the regular running shoe had a better running economy um, 
created a better running economy than the carbon plate running shoes. The study that I actually want to get to, which is interesting for me, and it's not technically a scientific study because it's not that well controlled, but I do think these results are worth talking about, is a study run by the New York Times. So they did it in 2018, and they basically wanted to check when Nike brought up out the vapor fly, they were pushing out all this advertising that this shoe is going to make you 4% faster in your race. And they wanted to see if they could verify this. So what they did was they looked at running accounts on Strava and they looked from 2014 all the way to 2018 and they looked at over 500,000 accounts and they compared runners. So they looked only at runners who logged what shoes they ran their marathons and half marathons in. And they looked at runners who had a finishing time for both the, um, the races done in carbon plated shoes and regular shoes. They looked at a wide variety of people as well. They looked at different ages. They looked at different speeds, males, females. So it was quite a nice sample of a varied cohort. And they actually found that, yeah, these people performed between three and 4% better in their half marathon and marathon times when they wore the carbon plated shoes. What I will say is from this, first, we have to rely on the people putting their data in accurately. So we're going to, assuming people don't lie about how fast they ran, but most of them use their watches. So I guess it would be accurate. But then also the other thing is, if you're going to invest in really expensive running shoes, let's face it, these carbon plated running shoes are expensive. Chances are you're also going to put more effort into your training. So it may be that actually these people trained better and therefore their performance was better but the shoes might also have worked. So it's an interesting study, but again, it's not definitive. You can't say all that 4% was down to the shoes. I think it's reasonable to say that the carbon plate running shoes will likely improve your performance. But what about the injury risk? We know from other situations, like for instance, zero drop versus um, regular running shoes. If you make that transition too quickly, you can actually end up with injuries because when you change the type of shoe and how it loads your foot. It loads different structures in your foot or it in a different way. So for instance, muscles that aren't used to taking as much strain or having to work as hard has to now work harder or certain bones take more pressure. Now, this is not a problem necessarily. It's usually when people make that transition too quickly and those tissues don't have enough time to strengthen and adapt to the new loads. So what about carbon plate shoes? Is there any evidence in the research that they can cause injuries? Now, there's not a lot of research out in this area get yet because these shoes are so new, but there is one case report study that we found or that I found that reported on five cases of um, injuries in elite athletes. And the alarming thing is that these injuries were actually navicular fractures or stress fractures. The navicular bone is a tiny little bone in your foot and it is a common area to get a stress fracture for athletes who do a lot of endurance running and they are notoriously difficult to actually recover from. So it's not an injury you want. Now, I will also say that what they found was that quite a few of these athletes who developed these didn't actually train in these running shoes. They just went and ran the race in them. So that's something we always advise against because that is a sure way of getting an injury. From my friends who used them and even just did what was seen as not that much running in it at the beginning, they found that because the shoes are quite flexible or springy, they found the tendons around the ankles, especially like the tip post tendon and the peroneal tendons, took quite a bit of strain and they were painful for a few days after. So they had to ease off and really ease into them slowly. Now, it might also be that it depends on a person's genetics, how these shoes affect them, because I know from my experience with other types of injuries, there are certain people who are just prone to certain type of injuries. Like for instance, runners with really flexible ankles or feet where the, their ligaments are quite lax. They struggle with running shoes that's too flexible and they end up with tendinopathies in the tendons around the ankle if their running shoes are too flexible. So it'll be interesting to see if certain types of people are predisposed to injuries in these more than others. But I will say that even for those runners, they can eventually run in more flexible shoes if they make that transition slowly and strengthen their ankles and things up. So my advice with this would be that if you are going to use carbon plate running shoes, you have to be sensible about how you introduce them. 
And a group of um, researchers recently wrote about their uh, worries about injuries in these shoes as well. And I agree with their recommendations. Basically what they said was that if you're gonna use them, you've gotta slowly, slowly get used to them for shorter runs first. Then once you're used to them, you can race in them. But then for training, they advise that you don't do all your training sessions in them. You only do your high intensity training sessions. So sessions that mimic races. So you do some of your training in the carbon plate shoes, others in your regular shoes, so you don't overwork your tendons. Is there a best brand that we can recommend when we look at all these research studies? So there's one study in 22 where they looked at what happens if you put people in a variety of different carbon plated shoes versus a regular running shoe, what's the improvement in running economy? The nice thing about this study is that it wasn't sponsored by any running shoe company. They went and bought the shoes themselves. So it means that they are likely not biased. What did the results show? Well, they found that the Hoka Rocket X and the Brooks Hyper Elite 2, that was similar to the regular running shoe, the Saucony as well as New Balance RC Elite was somewhat better than the traditional shoe. The two Nike models and the ASICS Metaspeed Sky came out top. And can you guess who the overall winner was? Well, of course, it was the Nike Alpha Fly who provided about 3% better performance than the rest of the shoes. Have a look at the description of this video if you want to have a look at these different brands. I've put links to them there. What's my advice for carbon plate running shoes? Well, I would likely only use it if I want to smash a PB. Also, I would not really use it unless you're already optimizing your training because you're much more likely to um, benefit or improve your times if you actually just optimize your training. But then if you are going to use them, make sure that they are comfortable. So don't just buy for the brand, also see how does it feel when it's on my feet and how does it feel when I run with it? Because time and again, when they try to look at what are the best indications for matching runners with running shoes and preventing injuries, they find that actually, if a runner chooses a shoe that's comfortable, that's the best indication that they're not gonna get an injury from it. And then lastly, go back to the advice about how to prevent injuries when you use these. It's all about slowly easing into it and following those principles of not doing all your runs in it, but just the faster runs in it so that you can get used to it and not overwork your feet. Brilliant, hope you found that useful. Now remember, if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. The link to the website is in the description of this video. Take care.